And I want to introduce Dr. Mimi Wagner, uh, an associate professor at ISU's College of Design. She teaches in both landscape architecture and sustainable environments uh, degree programs. Uh, Mimi's research focuses on interrelationships between people and natural resources, most notably rivers and streams. Her most rewarding teaching experiences, such as the one that's going to be featured on this panel, include interdisciplinary settings grounded in Iowa communities. Dr. Wagner. Great. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce Jasmine Diaz. Jasmine is a junior at ISU majoring in management, and she has a USLS minor. She has lived a majority of her life in Marshalltown, which is how we came to cross paths. This past summer, despite her enrollment in the, in the business college, she became immersed temporarily in the College of Design's interdisciplinary teaching and learning um, studios through participating in my course as an intern. And uh, so I'd like to go ahead and go to the next slide and ask Jasmine to tell a bit about her background. And I hope you guys can hear me today. I woke up with a little bit of a cold. Um, the reason why I felt so um, drive to do this internship was, first of all, um, a ma management, which is business. And then we live in a world, well, it's globally, and we always talk about PPP, which is people, profit, planet. Uh, we need to make sure that all of Latin America is up to date, because we're talking Norway is number one. And when you see Mexico, where we have a lot of resources, we don't really have a lot of knowledge on what it's really like to be sustainable. Uh, we have pretty much you, Mexico, we, I'm from Mexico. Uh, we are number one in a lot of ecosystems, and we have a lot of resources that are not being used properly. And we actually live in poverty. Some of the parts of Mexico are not well developed. And we think, why are we not being developed like Norway when we have so much resources? Um, my point of why I got so happy to be in this, it was because before I was working uh, pr with Professor Mimi, I did a little bit of research with uh, another uh, professor from uh, also the design, uh, <coughs> design uh, institute or faculty. She, uh, her name is uh, Dr. Hamidi, and uh, we did a little bit of interviews on how people cope with um, the whole tornado thing, and then we also see a, a lot of economical factors that they have to struggle through, like insurance, and how they actually um, were not being led to um, get ahead. If you look at the Latino community compared to the uh, other community they were looking at, Marshalltown is very divided into that. Uh, a lot of the Latino community was not getting uh, all the help they needed as quickly, and I'm not sure if it was because miscommunication or they were just not adjusted to the culture in the US. For example, uh, some people, they don't know a lot about how insurance work, or they don't know about um, how to go up to different offices to get information regarding these issues. Um, you think about the language barrier as well. Some people don't speak proper, like fluent English, so you have all these things that all gathered together, and you have people that are not being, you know, going with the, with the proper uh, way of getting ahead. And then, uh, I don't know, I've been living in Marshallton for about 13 years. I work in the hospital, and I saw all these things that were uh, part of my community, and I thought, why not do this? Uh, Professor Mimi was an, a great, great, great person to follow. And then I had the experience to work with um, multiple people from all over the world. We have people from Sudan, Ethiopia, China, Iran. So that opens you up to a lot of uh, different perspectives from all over the world. So next slide, fabulous. So Jasmine joined a class that I taught this summer, a Sustainable Environments Graduate Studio. And the Sustainable Environments Program Focus this past year on each of our courses um, having some grounding in the community of Marshalltown. We were interested in providing learning opportunities for students in ways that were respectful of the, the impacts that residents felt from the tornado. But we also wanted to leverage the time and energy and skills that the students brought to address the needs that the community expressed. So we didn't want to come in and 
design for something for them and then leave. We wanted to try to understand and work with the community and design with them. So Jasmine was, uh, thanks to this internship program and, and also a bit of funding from the College of Design to help support her, her stipend, uh, we were able to have her as a resident in our graduate studio. And I've never worked um, with undergraduates in a graduate studio in this capacity. I was really excited, and I am really excited about the potential for this in the future, for this model. But essentially, we, were, we spent a portion of the summer focused on, uh, we had to develop some topic of interest that this would be the third semester we had been working there. And the students chose trees because tree damage was something that was mentioned a lot by uh, in, in interviews that we had conducted and public sessions we had conducted the previous semester. What we didn't know at the time until we dug into it was the great disparity, uh, the real social equity issues related to trees in cities based on the population that lives in a certain neighborhood. So thanks to Jasmine helping us, and she's gonna talk more a bit about what she did specifically, other than just be there and listen and be part of our team uh, and communicate. Uh, we were able to select a topic and then create quite a bit of data and products and tools for Marshalltown and for other tornado damaged communities so that their recovery can be as resilient and they can be as resilient as possible through recovery. Uh, during this internship, I pretty much try to help with translation, also try to reach out to people around my neighborhood and asking them questions regards whether they would like to have uh, kind of different designs. For example, uh, the previous slides there, Shuang, she's from China, and she was very interested in integrating Latinos into going out in the outdoors, because like a lot of Latinos, they live in these uh, kind of like monotone. We always, okay, we wake up eight in the morning, go to work for eight hours, come back home, cook for the family, go to sleep. And then you don't have this interaction with nature. You don't typically go out and you know enjoy nature, especially in Iowa, such beautiful nature. So she was trying to integrate people to uh, go out and uh, just, she had this beautiful thing because she doesn't speak Spanish. So I was trying to translate for her and she tried to explain to this lady how she would have more birds coming into her garden and she would like arrange the trees in a different way. And she like explained it with a map thing and she understood with, without even like speaking the same language. Uh, it, I thought it was very interesting because like, how beautiful way to integrate someone than, you know, being so thinking outside the box. That's why I'm so gr glad to work with them because they're such a like outside of the box thinkers and that really integrates into in, uh, including different uh, cultures. Great. And I'm trying to think if there was anything else. So we did a lot of field work and Jasmine was there with us in the neighborhoods working, just talking to residents, um, answering questions, helping us, because she herself was in the tornado in Marshalltown um, and was there that afternoon. And, and that was actually really impactful for my students as well, to, to, hear, that, to hear that story from someone who was kind of a part of our group. Um, and the um, focus on trees, what we learned, and the tornado was the reason we worked in Marshalltown and the reason we were paired with Jasmine. But what we found was something that's well understood by researchers in other places, but we in our program hadn't realized it before. The, the table is stacked against immigrant neighborhoods in so many ways, and immigrants, and low-income neighborhoods. What we didn't understand, but has been pretty well documented, is that public investment in trees, urban trees, street trees, that are actually owned by the city, provided by the city at no cost, and located on right away in front of people's houses, that, that nationwide this exists, but also in Iowa and also in Marshalltown, that the amount of resources, the majority of all the tree resources are going into Anglo neighborhoods. They're not going as much, if, if at all, into neighborhoods of color and neighborhoods with lower incomes. And so the tornado was the reason we were there, but what we found was 
thanks to really good data from the city of Marshalltown before the tornado, we could see the disparity. And we set about this summer to try to understand more about how to overcome that disparity. What would need to change in the way public tree resources were being allocated in this community, but it's also the program that's running the distribution of tree resources that has really established a method and a process that Anglos can deal with very efficiently, but people of color are more challenged to participate in it. And so we felt very thankful that we had Jasmine's insights and her thoughts and her experiences in the community. And um, I think that she, you know, we, the students themselves put together the readings for her independent study. They chose from our curriculum in the last two semesters, put together a set of things that were probably, she will never have read them for any other course. But I think that they were um, super helpful for her to understand who, you know, where we come from and what we think about. And I know that the students in the class, like she said, from all over the world, um, really appreciated her and getting to know her and going out to dinner with her afterwards and traveling to and from Marshalltown. So we were very thankful in the program and, and the students themselves for her participation.